Madame Arbor, awfully good to have you here. I want to start with this central question. What are we capable of doing as a country in the next decade that would truly make a difference? I think we're capable of doing a lot, but the threshold first start is we have to re-engage in the world and with the world. Let's put this into some context, uh, because a lot of people have said the same thing, that in the past decade, Canada has fallen off the world stage. Why did that happen? Well, I think uh, foreign policy is usually not the centerpiece of electoral politics. So it's very tempting, I think, for, for governments who don't come with an agenda of engagement and interest in the world at large to just neglect it and, and, and focus on other priorities. I I don't know what the motivations are, but the fact is Canada is completely absent. And, and over your lifespan and the work that you've done, uh, Canada, of course, was seen for, for a long, long time as being one of the primary engagers in a multilateral world. Absolutely. I think in the last uh, maybe 20 years, Canada was a convener, was very much a leader in, in ideas that have shaped, I think, foreign uh, policies on the world scene. And it mattered. I mean, I would talk to diplomats. It mattered what, quote, the Canadians thought about something. Now I don't think it does. Okay. If that's where we are, how do we get out of that? What is the solution to put us back on the world stage to be a player that we used to be? Well, I think all kinds of initiatives could be taken. But, but although it may sound naive, I think there's a central effort that might be worth exploring which is to, to try to redesign the fundamentals of a Canadian foreign policy as sort of a national good, something that would transcend party politics. And maybe it, it is not so naive because, as I said, it tends not to have a huge impact on electoral stakes. So if we could get a kind of multi-party, multi-political party efforts to start designing and investing in a long-term uh, Canadian foreign policy, we might just be able to have an impact. And, and on that, I should add that currently in all the big democracies, the, 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 the big impediment to impact is what's called short-termism. Everything is geared to four or five years electoral cycles. To change the world, you need to stay the course for a lot longer. Let me take you down that road then. What do you think, and I'm just looking for one concept here, what could all parties agree on under what you're suggesting? Is there, is there something that's, that you've thought of? Well, I'd hate to write the script because I really believe in, in sort of very free conversations on these issues. But as I said, I think this has to reflect at least a basic consensus that Canadians embrace for their domestic policies as well. So speak to a field that I know of. We could decide to invest, for instance, in justice, rule of law. This is very neglected on the international scene. The UN has no particular expertise in, in this field. It doesn't have to be that. It could be in the health sector, or it could be just in processes. I mentioned mediation. It could be other things. I, I would like to see this explored if at least we could get an interest on the part of political parties to surrender a little bit of their competitiveness to a national interest in foreign policy. I'm sure they and we collectively would come up with something. So the process would work, this big idea of yours would work, in the sense that the parties would agree, and let's take justice, that, that at the heart of Canadian foreign policy is a long-term commitment to increase the standard of justice around the world. Is that essentially what you're saying? Yeah, it could be like that. To assist countries in developing a, a judicial justice infrastructure that is appropriate for them. See, this is one thing you can't do in four years. I mean, look at what we're leaving behind in Afghanistan after a decade of engagement. As crisis group, group we've reported extensively calling for institution building, long-term investment in leaving behind a decent governance infrastructure in Afghanistan. The whole thing could unravel very rapidly after the elections and the, the withdrawal of ISAF uh, in the spring of 2014. And how realistic do you think it is that in this very polarized political environment we have in this country, that there would be a political will to have that sort of unified foreign policy that you're talking about? 
Well, I think that's uh, the, the very challenging aspect of this idea. I think in the current climate, there's not a lot of appetite for that. And because foreign policy concerns are not the daily concerns of most Canadians, it's also hard to mobilize public opinion to push the political parties to embrace this idea of holding a couple of basic initiatives as a national good. How would the world react to this? If Canada did come up with one or two continuing ideas outside of the realm of partisan politics when it comes to our place in the world, how would the world react to that, do you think? Would they notice? Oh, well, first of all, they would notice that Canada is back in the conversation. That would already be a big thing. And I think it's going to take time for Canada to regain the position that it had through deploying uh, Canadians in high-level uh, United Nations position, uh, in positions of leadership in all international organizations, and in um, uh, investing money and talent and, and efforts where you, you could have tremendous impact. Perhaps with your big idea, we might back, get back on that stage again. I really hope so. Madame Arbor, it's a very great pleasure to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thank you. It's good to talk to you. That was great. Oh, sir. Oh, oh.